This is one sexy cowboy boot, but it is tricky to break in despite the underfoot comfort. Let's take a look at Chisos uh, flagship number one boot. How you going? My name is Tech and welcome back to Bootlosophy. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I'm recording on, the Wajit people. That's your baby, <laughs> he says in his totally fake Texas drawl. <laughs> I'll stop now. <laughs> this is the Chisos number one cowboy boot. Now, if you're a regular viewer, hopefully a subscriber, you know that I'm a service boot guy, right? Uh, Obviously, as a boot guy generally, I own and review other styles, mock toes, work boots, and even tall boots like engineers and ropers. But I've only ever reviewed one Western cowboy boot, very early in the, in the history of this channel, right at the start, I think. And you can see it up here. However, I am a boot guy. And while I readily admit I don't know a lot about cowboy boots, they are boots, so here we are. So let's go through these boots and I'll tell you about the difficult break-in despite being very comfortable under the foot. This pair of Chisos number no. 1 is a round toe, 11-inch tall boot on a high, uh, it's slightly over 1.5 inch uh, heel. Even not being a cowboy boot expert, I can clearly see all the hallmarks of the cowboy boot, starting with the high riding heel, uh, the tall shaft with the scalloped collar, and the really amazing decorative stitching across the, the instep and the toe bug. And also the decorative stitching of the sun in front of the shaft and of the moon and stars on the back of the shaft. Apparently it's a picture of the sun and moon over the Chisos Mountains in uh, Big Bend National Park in Texas in the USA. The toe shape is a classic cowboy round toe. Although Chisos do, uh, do other toe shapes in their numbered name boots, you know, number two, three, four. Uh, in this grainy but shiny black leather, the aesthetic is both of a cowboy boot that you can wear with a suit, like Larry Hagman in the old soap opera Dallas, or with jeans and being very cowboyish. I have to admit that while I really like this sexy looking style, I'm a little self-conscious because I'm nowhere near a horse anywhere. <laughs> I kind of feel a little stolen glory. Uh, which I don't feel wearing service boots uh, or work boots for some reason. Before we go on, let me remind you to keep your finger on the like button to click when you like this video. It'll help me out if you do and also please subscribe. I will also leave an affiliate link to the Chisos website down in the description area below. Now you don't pay any more but if you buy using that link I will get a 5 or 6% commission that will help me to run my channel. So help me out. And being up front, also know that I got these boots to review for free, but I am otherwise not being paid by Chisos to do this review, so I will be as objective as I can. Let's start by talking about the brand Chisos, based in Austin in Texas in the USA. Uh, if you go to the website, you get that the vibe is all about fun, uh, pride in Texas and doing things right. Will is the founder of the Chisos brand and he comes across as a genuine fun guy interested in keeping the business small and personal, uh, creating a, a loyal, happy team and building a passionate community around the boot. Uh, the brand focuses on making traditional cowboy boots that are comfortable, made well, made sustainably and support the handcrafted nature of traditional cowboy boots made in Texas and in Mexico. While it is headquartered in Austin, Will learned about making boots in Leon, Mexico and he then uses uh, the same family-run workshop that he learned the craft in to make his boots. Will also appears on some very informative videos on their own channel on YouTube and I do recommend you go and check that channel out. Their web website also has a, a very useful FAQ page called their Help Center and I will leave a link to that down below as well. The cues chosen in the FAQs cover every part of construction, uh, fit and brand philosophy. They're great read. It's a very personal brand and just talking to customer service, you feel like you're welcomed into the family. One of their team saw my unboxing video, you can see it up here, uh, where I talked about the fit being a little snug and they immediately reached out to me and gave me a whole lot of tips and advice about breaking them in, uh, which I'll pass on to you in the sizing and fit part of this video. So that being said, uh, let's go straight to the construction. 
These boots are handcrafted in Leon, Mexico, which I'm sure you've heard of, uh, the shoemaking capital of Mexico. I interviewed Leon native Rudy Hurtado about what goes on in Mexico, and you can watch that interview up there. As usual though, let me start from the bottom of the boot. The construction is what they call channel welted, which really means it's recraftable when your outsoles wear out. What is channel welting? Well, channel welting is the traditional cowboy boot construction method that some people call hand welted Goodyear welting. What they do is they, they carve a channel into the leather insole and then the flap that's raised is used instead of a canvas gemming to stitch onto the turned in uppers and the welt itself. This eliminates a secondary point of failure where older boots can have the gemming detached from the insoles. Once this welt is attached, they then stitch through the outside edge of the welt uh, to stitch on the leather outsole. Uh, in between the 4 to 5 mm uh, thick leather insole and the 4 mm thick leather outsole is a cork filling, uh, which with the rest of the leather sandwich helps shock absorption and comfort. However, they then up the ante in comfort and put in a removable leather top triple density organic polymer comfort insole. I find these cushion the whole foot in fact, and not just some uh, weight bearing points at the heel and ball. It also provides really comfortable arch support. It is soft to feel, uh, but is thick. And while eventually comfortable, it was, I think, the source of my initial break-in issues, which I'll talk about next. If you remove the removable insoles, you can look directly at the thick leather insole, and you can see that with the uh, 270 degree welt, the back end of the boot and the heel stack are all nailed and glued. On the outsole, I can see the brass nails and the traditional lemon wood pegs attaching the back end. There is a shank, and as you can see that from this bulge here. The heel is stacks on stacks of leather, topped by a grippy rubber top lift. Going inside the boot, the whole boot is leather lined with a, uh, what would you call that color? Cherry red maybe? Cherry red leather lining that's soft and luxurious. Now a lot of boot makers talk about using glove leather lining, but this is the first boot where I felt the lining is like a soft luxury glove. The internal heel counter sewn inside the lining is full leather, uh, but I don't know what uh, the toe box is for structure. Now I don't feel any cut edges on the inside, so I'm guessing it's a sky of leather. The um, uppers uh, are full grain leather. Uh, they're from retired dairy cows that aren't going to be around for long anyway, one way or the other. <laughs> Um, according to Chisos, cowboy boots are usually made from calf, which only yields an astonishing two pairs of boots per hide, as opposed to up to ten for adult cattle. This makes the hides from older dairy cattle much more sustainable. Now, I did expect old cattle to yield firmer hides, but this is supple. Chiso says that uh, they got their tannery to establish a process that renders these cow hides more supple, and honestly, Despite the two and a bit millimeter thickness and the lining, they really feel very supple. I think the outstanding characteristic of this leather is the graininess on the surface of this. And as you can see, after some wear, it develops, I guess, more rolls and creases. The stitching is remarkable. Now, the construction stitching, that's the stitches that puts the boot together, they're very clean, accurate, and they look sturdy to me. The way the uh, two pull loops are stitched on is clearly going to last. But the standout has to be the decorative stitching. Not just the folds across the instep and the toe bug or toe rose, uh, the stitching that draws the pictures of the sun and the moon and stars uh, and the outline of the Chisos Mountains. It's a work of art. In terms of leather care, I always check the maker's recommendations first. And in the case of Chisos, they give a wealth of information. Firstly, they advise to avoid repeated exposure to water and excess moisture. Not many makers are as truthful because the construction method is water resistant, but it's not a scuba diving boot, so don't go fishing in it every day. <laughs> they advise brushing the dirt off regularly, like I always say, and then when you need to condition, they recommend a leather balm or conditioner. They have their own. But I think any good conditioner like Big Four, a Venetian Shoe Cream, my favourite, Smith's or R.M. Williams' leather dressing, all of that will do. Once the conditioner has been put on and is dried and soaked in, maybe a couple of hours, brush it again and finish off by buffing with a clean rag. 
You can also finish off with a wax polish if you want a real shine. Now to sizing, fit and comfort. First sizing. I measure a US 8.5 in D width on the Brannock device. In almost all of my heritage US boots, I wear an 8D. Uh, in UK and Aussie made boots, which are usually made true to size, I'm usually a 7.5 regular. I ordered these in my uh, usual US 8D, and they're the right size in terms of fit, but they were very snug. The length was right, and despite what looks like a very narrow toe box, I had no issues with my toes being squeezed. Somehow, you know, the design of the last, uh, that's the mall in which these are shaped, the, the last allows for room for your toes, but still makes it look like a stylish pointy round toe. Even the high heel, which usually pushes your foot forward, didn't impact on the pressure on my toes. Where it was snug was in the instep, and I did have a hot spot on my right foot right at the uh, little toe knuckle joint. So breaking in wasn't easy from the outset. But Marley from Chisos reached out to me with some advice, and after a combination of first wearing thinner socks, uh, using a boot stretcher across the, the, the right instep and initially removing the removable insole, the uppers did stretch and became a lot more comfortable. Now in time, I gradually put on my usual boot socks and then uh, later I reinserted the removable insole. Look, I, I, I really haven't worn them enough to say that they're fully broken in comfortable, but I can wear them all day now and they feel great. I have had people say that when they put on boots, they feel bulletproof. They should put these on. <laughs> you tower over everyone that you used to be at the same height with. Uh, you walk with purpose. You really feel like maybe you can ride a horse. <laughs> Value. These cost US $5.95. Now that sounds like a lot, but comparing them to some cowboy boot brands that I've heard of, uh, Ariat, they're mostly around $300, but I'm pretty sure that they're factory made uh, with quite a lot of uh, uh, unnatural materials, and they are at the low end. Tony Lama have cheaper models, but they seem to average five or six hundred bucks. Tacovas range from 300 to the mid 600s. And then there's Lucchese, which seem to sell for nearly a thousand, obviously at the top end. So just looking at that untutored range, I'm not an expert, it looks like Chiso's pricing is right in the middle. I can't say about the quality of those other brands, but I don't see any quality issues with these, and they are handcrafted. I think if you're more experienced with cowboy boots, you'd have to make your own judgment. But if I apply uh, the same measures as when I look at service boots, I think these seem to tick all the right boxes for that price. So that's my foray into Western cowboy boots. In my lifestyle, I don't wear these that much, but I am glad I have a pair. Uh, if you follow me, you know that I've started selling some of my boots on my website, bootlosophy.com. Go and have a look if you're interested, um, just because I have too many now. But I tell you what, I won't be moving these on. I want, I, I want to keep this pair. I really want a good pair of cowboy boots in my collection for office work and, and play. Hey, I hope you like this video. If you do, you know what to do. Click on like and subscribe. I bring you boot review videos every week, so don't miss them. Until the next time then, take care out there and see you soon.